Hello and welcome back. I'm sorry, it's been so long since I recorded any videos at all. I'm really sorry. Anyway, what I wanted to do, um, just thought I'd uh, knock together a quick video just to give you an overview of this board, which I designed a little while ago. So before I explain this, let me just give some background um, to give some context and understand uh, what it is, why it's useful, etc. So some people, well, many people probably will be familiar with these boards. These, uh, this is the GBS 8200 uh, Arcade Upscaler. Uh, this one is, yes, the GBS 8200. There's also an 8220 variant, which has, uh, which has two VGA outputs. There's also an um, HDMI output variant of this as well. But what these are, are cheap upscalers, basically. They're originally designed for use in arcade cabinets. Um, and obviously, out the back here, they spit out, they take in whatever input signals, uh, that you give them so you've got uh, you've got CGA and EGA input here on this uh, DB15 connector you've got bare pins here for red green blue and then vertical sync uh, over here you have a smaller connector that one is P11 uh, on that you have vertical sync horizontal sync red green blue and composite sync oops sorry went out of shot there and over here you have the what are they it's the Y PB YR uh, component video. So take all of those inputs and scale it up to a VGA connection. I'm sorry, a VGA signal, so obviously that you can plug it into a monitor. So these are quite cheap. Um, you can pick these up for about £20 on Amazon, um, probably about the same if you order them from, well no, probably a lot cheaper if you order them from China. I'm impatient, I don't like to wait for shipping, um, so I tend to buy it off Amazon. Um, but like I say, you can get them really, really cheap, but they do have a lot of problems. The image quality is not great. It's fair to say that this is definitely, oops, sorry, made the camera shake. It's fair to say that this is definitely a budget, um, a budget option. This You're not gonna get anywhere near the image quality of something like the OSSC, for example, but it does the job. So the issue that you have, that you're going to have with one of these, however, if you try and use this with like a, a retro console or a retro computer, is getting the signals into it and getting this thing to understand its signals. So, like I said earlier, you have a red, green, and blue um, input, as well as a combined, uh, com what's known as a composite sync signal. But what comes out of most home consoles usually, and I'm looking around for an example, well, okay, is that the signals are not really that clean. So this is the SCART connector, um, SCART that we use in Europe. Um, apologies if that doesn't show up very well. Let's try and redo my exposure there. No, okay, hopefully. I'm looking at the, the screen at a funny angle. Hopefully it'll be okay. Um, so on the SCART, for example, you've got pins for, how many pins? About 21 pins, I think. So you've got red, green, and blue split out separately on your SCART connector. But what you get for the synchronization signal um, is a combined signal called um, composite, well, it's not a combined, well, yes, it is a combined thing, but you get a signal called uh, composite video. Consumer AV gear can extract the vertical sync information or can use that composite video connector in order to get the vertical sync information from it. This board, however, can't do that. Or, you know, if you're lucky, it'll kind of work, it'll kind of not work. It really doesn't like composite syncing on composite video signals. So the composite video, as well as having the vertical, vertical synchronization signal, it also has your horizontal sync information and it has the video data all on the same one single pin, which is why quite generally it's considered quite inferior. So what this little board, what this little interface does is We'll ignore this side of the board for a moment, I'll come back to that. Uh, what this does is implement a circuit based on the LM1881 IC and does what's called sync stripping. So this little processor, this little processor, it's not a processor, this little IC takes your composite video signal and it basically strips out the video element of it and leaves you with a signal which is combined horizontal and vertical sync, what's known as this pin here, C-Sync. Um, composite, no. Yes, composite sync, not composite video. So aside from that little circuit, basically um, the only other thing I do um, is bring out the pins for audio. Uh, and we've also got a power connector on here as well because the LM1881 needs uh, five volts of power. 
So the difference with this, however, is that, let me see if I can find the pin, uh, which pin it is. Ah, yes, okay, over here, R2. Uh, sorry, is that a shot there? Um, is R2, resistor number two over here. So this is a termination resistor. Now, I will pull up the schematic on screen uh, in a little while um, to show you the actual schematic for this. And the, uh, the board designs as well as the schematic are going to be made open source. I'm gonna put that up on GitHub. Link will be down below, as they say. But this is a termination resistor and a lot of implementations of sync strippers miss this out. Um, what they usually implement is basically the LM1881 reference design. Um, as it appears on the data sheet, but they miss out this uh, terminizer, uh, terminization, this termination resistor, which helps complete the video circuit. Now, I don't complain, I don't claim to understand exactly why you need that, but this kind of signal, sorry, this kind of setup is more akin to what you'd get in a piece of consumer AV gear. Um, and I found it tends to work really, really, really well. So um, the other part over here, um, is an interface for a microcontroller. One of the issues with these boards is the firmware that they run. So they, uh, for example, one issue that was spotted by somebody a lot more talented than me is that the DRAM, the memory, uh, this Winbond chip is basically run too fast um, and it causes a lot of issues and what have you. So this interface over here, let me bring both of these on at the same time. Um, these sockets basically, this socket exists for and I'll show you a completed one in a moment, um, exists for you to plug in an, uh, a microcontroller. And in this case, it's been designed for the Node MCU. I will put a link in the description to my information one. Um, sorry, the one that I'm actually using. And the way that works is that over here on the GBSH200, let me see if I can bring this into focus for you. Um, you've got four pins here for SDA, uh, VCC, ground and SCL. And what those are, are the I squared C interface or inter IC communication, I think is what it's called. So what we can do is put a jumper over this header that puts this chip into debug mode and allows it to accept external control from this header. So that's what we've got over here. So we've got pins here for, hopefully you're gonna be able to see this okay on camera. You've got SCL, SDA, ground, and also a debug. The debug one, you'll notice uh, there was no pin over here for debug. Um, I'll show you on a completed version. So this board um, basically serves two purposes, as well as doing the sync stripping and allowing you to get a good video signal out of the GBS H200. Um, it also provides a custom firmware, and I should be able to give you a bit of a demo of what the firmware looks like later on. So put those two together, and you end up with some unholy God awful mess like this. And I've just noticed my debug wire is loose. Good job on uh, crimping those pins. So video information goes over to P11. I've clipped off, which one is that? Ground, ground, uh, HS, no VS. Wait a minute. Oh yes, okay, so the sync signal, so the sync pins basically are disconnected. Uh, the only one that's connected, the only sync pin, sorry, the separate horizontal and vertical sync pins are disconnected. The one that's left is the composite sync pin. Uh, so we've got the video information coming in over here. We tap off this board and bring power over there for the LM1881. So it's important to note that these boards can accept between five and 12 volts. However, the LM1881 only runs on five volts. So if you try and run 12 volts through it, you will make the magic smoke escape. So when you're powering this, you have to use um, a five volt adapter. And obviously what I've done here, I've soldered on a pin header onto those I squared C pins so that we can use um, the interface over here. Now this one, this awkward one here, is the only really, really difficult part of this installation is that you have to solder a wire basically to this pin. And I'm gonna leave links in description telling you about, uh, telling you, uh, giving you more information about how to set this up. Um, but you have to solder a wire onto this pin, which then goes over to the debug header over here, which on my version has, uh, has uncrimped itself. I'm gonna to have to fix that. Uh, and then on the audio pins, I've just got a three and a half mil um, 
uh, socket broken out to break out the audio pins. I do have, I haven't yet done it yet, I haven't done it yet, but I do have one of these extruded aluminium Hammond enclosures um, that I'm going to mount this all in. Haven't gotten around to it, hence why I've just got beer wires and beer boards lying around on my desk. And hence why um, things like this happen, where my pins get broken. Never mind. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to give you a demonstration of the uh, wear interface then, because I didn't realize that this is broken. So, that about sums it up for that. I don't think there was anything else worth mentioning. What you end up with this, uh, with this solution then is, um, is something where you can easily plug in a retro console into SCART and get a VGA connection out of the back of it. I'm using VGA rather than HDMI because I have a, oh, I'm not sure which year it was released, but a very late 90s, early 2000s PC CRT, which is absolutely amazing quality, which I wanted to use um, to get that kind of retro experience. It's not as good as having um, like a television or a PVM monitor or something like that, but it comes damn close. And if you have it in the right resolution, you do get some brilliant scan lines on it. Anyway, let's jump over to uh, the KiCad view. I will give a bit of an overview of the schematic. Like I say, this is very, very simple. Um, and I'll also show you the board layout because there are one or two gotchas and one or two errors that I've made with this. But like I say, this is all gonna be going up on GitHub uh, for, you to, uh, for you to do whatever the hell you want with it. Um, there's no licensing attached with this. This is basically now public domain. Do what you want with it. It's a very, very simple design. The only, re you know, you can make this layout. Do you know what? I'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway, back in a moment. Okay, and welcome back. So here we are at KiCad. Let's open up the schematic and I'll give you a bit of an overview of the board. So somebody helpfully already had a symbol for um, a SCART socket, which was fantastic. Go away, GeForce Experience. Go away. I've got to turn that pop-up off. Uh, so it saved me having to having to write my own. So as you can see, there's very, very few pins off the SCART socket that we're actually using. Um, so what's 20? 20 is composite video. That's correct, which is why we've got the 75 ohm um, resistor to ground here, um, the termination resistor. Um, yeah, so uh, that's our composite video signal coming in here uh, into composite video. Uh, our output here is C-Sync through a 470 ohm resistor um, out to the C-Sync signal. Uh, that's the the five pin header that I showed you on the actual board overview. Uh, and the reason for this is just to attenuate, the reason for this output resistor is just to attenuate the signal slightly so that we don't overload the, um, just so that we don't overload, sorry, microphone's not adjusted properly. So that we do, yeah, the reason for this resistor is just so that we don't overload the inputs on the GBS8200. So that's fine. Um, these pins, uh, this over here is all ground. Here's our ground, pl uh, ground signal. Uh, over here then are the video signals that we're interested in. So starting on pin 15, we've got red, uh, pin 11, we've got green, pin 7, we've got blue, all going over here. Uh, what else is here? We've also got the power input here, which drives power to the LM1881. Um, we've got a um, decoupling capacitor there as well. Um, we've also got the audio output here, um, the off-board connectors, and as well as the Node MCU interface. And as you can see, there's very, very little going on. Um, I've got, there. Are how many of these? How many ground pins are there? That's what's that five uh no four ground pins they probably don't all need to be connected but i've grounded them anyway why not um and yeah so besides that we're just using voltage input and the scl sda lines um and that's pretty much oh yes and the debug pin here on the function name here is miso but uh we're not actually i can't remember what miso is used for i think that one's i2s or is it um it might be the other one I'm thinking of, Spy. I can't remember, but whatever. Um, our firmware doesn't actually use that. So, like I say, the schematic is very, very, very simple. That's the schematic. Let's have a look at the board layout, the PCB layout editor. And hopefully it's not going to have to recompile any... Um, nope, we're good. Uh, let's go to the 3D view for a moment. So, and that's pretty much it. 
and that is uh, pretty much it, as you've seen on the uh, on the desktop view there. Uh, before you ask, this JLC, JLC, JLC over here, this is because I ordered the board through JLC PCB, and unless you want a random reference number somewhere, you put JLC four times somewhere on your layout, and that's where they'll put the board reference number. Um, you have to pay a lot of money to take that off. Um, so that's an easier solution for it. Um, so the one boo-boo I mentioned earlier on is either side here, there should be a hole routed out here. The vast majority of uh, SCART sockets that I have seen um, that you can still buy because nobody seems to make them anymore, they have clips coming down. I wish I'd have showed you this earlier. It doesn't matter. They have clips coming down uh, which are intended to clip directly onto a PCB to give you some measure of strain relief when you're plugging and unplugging a SCART connector. Otherwise, you're putting quite a lot of stress on these solder joints. So if you do decide to use this, I would strongly recommend taking a look at, um, I was gonna say take a, look at some, uh, take a look at some mechanical diagrams, but the chances are you're probably gonna have to get your hands on um, a uh, SCART socket first because you know you can't just look up a data sheet and use that as a good guide um, because nobody makes the things anymore the data sheets are going to be inaccurate any data sheet you find there's no guarantee you're going to be able to find that actual part so you're gonna have to get your hands on an um, on a SCART socket measure it all out and then route those holes in the board here um, so that you can have those clips coming in or you do what I do and just risk uh, the solder joints and just clip them off it's up to you. I make no judgment either way. So, as you can probably see, there is quite a lot of empty space on this board. Um, it could be a lot smaller. Um, this board could be much, much smaller. The reason I've chosen these dimensions, the reason I've chosen this width, is because it fits inside of an uh, it fits inside of the Hammond enclosure that I'm planning to use. Um, there is absolutely is scope to come in and um, and redo this. Uh, where's my measuring tool? How do I find the measure? Ah, here it is. So, this board is, here we go, uh, 120 millimeters wide, and like I say, that's because it fits my enclosure. Um, there is a lot of wasted space. Not wasted, yeah. No, yeah, there is a lot of wasted space on here. The layout could be much more efficient. I've designed it this way because it fits my chosen enclosure. And as you've seen, I'm using right-angled pins on all of these at the back here, just to make it a little bit more compact there. So that's a bit of an overview of the GBS 8200, uh, the GBS 8200 SCART interface that I designed. Uh, like I said, I do get very good quality results with it. I've been very happy with it. I don't tend to use it at much higher than say 800 by 600 resolution um, on the monitor. I try and go as low as possible um, because then it tends to bring out the scan lines in the CRT. Um, you can get scan lines on um, a PC CRT. Um, you just have to work a little bit harder for it. Um, it's a lot more difficult than just using uh, a consumer television but I've been very impressed with the results of it it turns into a fairly easy to use system and um, hopefully well some people may find it useful and uh, like I say the plans are you know not even open source um, you can call it open source I guess but you know public domain um, do with it what you will there is no licensing attached fork your uh, fork my repository fork your repo um, sorry um, fork the repository do what you want with it um, it's up to you so thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.